real quilts. That's what we're detailing today on Sewing with Nancy. You may ask, aren't all quilts real? Oh, well, of course they are. Yet the term real quilts may conjure up an image of 1930s style quilts pieced together in small scale pastel fabrics. Darlene Zimmerman returns as my guest, sharing traditional quilt block patterns with a fresh approach. Darlene, you call your quilting techniques fresh from the clothesline. Explain that for our viewers. Well, Nancy, I like to think of these techniques as fresh, um, like laundry hanging out on the line in the mm -hmm. spring. Uh, the traditional trip around the world quilt is an example of a technique that's been refreshed. I've updated the process and I simplified the technique. And consider starting with a crib size quilt. Fresh from the clothesline quilts, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing Designs and Class A Needles. The trip around the world design is really nothing new, but Darlene has a fresh approach for this. And here again is the photo of the quilt hanging on the clothesline. And Darlene, this quilt has lots of motion. Yes, it does. You see those circular shapes um, that appear just by the arrangement of color. And speaking of color, since 1930s, 1940s, the quilts are your specialty. You've chosen the reproduction fabrics and exactly. that we have in these samples. And we have a half of a quilt here, a little bit better than a half of a quilt, to show the component pieces. And the components are you create the four quadrants of the quilt, and the upper right and lower left are identical, and the upper left and <laughs> well, the uh, invisible, yes, the virtual, exactly. the virtual. <laughs> would be identical. Plus, you have the horizontal and vertical sashings. Now this may appear to you that you'll be cutting lots and lots of squares. Oh, quite the contrary, because we're never cutting a square. No. Only strips of fabric, and you'll need 10 colors to coordinate and for, to make this crib size quilt. And here you have strip sets, in other words, fabric sewn together in a larger strip. And I have two different strip sets. Rather than piecing these all into one giant strip set, I keep them in two strip sets. They're easier to cut apart, and it's more accurate. That and that's way. the fresh part, because mm -hmm. I've made this quilt, and I've put a larger quilt, and I've had maybe 22 strips sewn together. And to cut those is a challenge. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we can cut these easily, and I have stacked them. And I've offset them so the seams yeah. aren't yeah, stacking a, up. They're not exact, they're aligned, but the, the crosswise seams, the horizontal seams are not one on top of each other. Right, they're offset. So, so there. now I'm ready mm -hmm. to cut some, some strips two and a half inches wide. And, and you keep them in pairs. Yes, keep them in pairs and then you're ready to sew them together into rings or circles. And that is simply done by meeting right sides together. Mm -hmm. And then you could chain stitch, just chain one after another. Chain one, chain, I guess it went this way, chain two. Just keep sewing these together to create, which I have here, many tubes. Yes, many tubes. And then it's a simple matter to take the seams apart, um, different seam each time so that you get the staggered look in the, steer, the stair step look in the, in the quilt. So we'll show you how to make a block. Here is, you'll need two blocks that will kind of be a mirror image of each other and you have the process. So we have, we're going to make one exactly the same sure. because we have two different ones made. Okay. So we need to take it apart. So I'll line matching it up, right? Oops, this way. <laughs> yeah, it's and good visually. And we want to take it apart right here. 
So we'll open this seam. And we did kind of, our Darlene's stitching is not that weak. We did take out a few stitches ahead of time. And now you can see it's identical. It's a little longer at the top. You'll, you've made these so you can take off two additional right. blocks. Okay. That just gives me more options for arranging it. Now we don't want to make another one the same. Mm -hmm. We want to move up one square so it looks just like that. Sure. So again, we're going to undo this seam with any luck. There we are. And this would be the next one, and so on. And you see the stair steps going up. Mm -hmm. So it, this is going to look just like this one. With, mm -hmm. You had eight fabrics in a row mm -hmm. and seven across across to, to get that. So then you would meet, of course, right sides together. Mm -hmm. And I do repress the seams so that all the seams oppose each other. Often I say they kiss so that they're mm -hmm. going in opposite directions. So one, one strip set would be going up and the other strip set going down so that they would not, all the bulk would not be on one side. Exactly. Let's take a look at your sewn section. Here are, here's the sewn section. And when we do that, you can see that the seam allowances are going in opposite directions. And that really makes a whole lot of difference makes it for accuracy in this mm -hmm. area. In the book that accompanies today's program, you will give instructions on how to cut the center sections yes. and the sashing strips across the bottom. We have lots of strips here, Darlene. I'm not sure I separated these correctly, and I didn't, so we'll just make believe they're in the right <laughs> spot. But this is how you are able to get accurate trip around the world so that it works easily using vintage fabrics, but using updated techniques. Little spiders often find quilts hung on the clothesline a welcome resting spot. The next fresh from the clothesline design pays tribute to the uninvited guest where a web of fabric is pieced together in their honor. Now, not all quilts have to fit a bed. That's correct. And these are just placemats, uh, which uses a single block. And then I've used the leftover strip sets to piece the sides to make it into a rectangular shape. Much like the trip around the world quilt that we just finished detailing, this spider web pattern starts with a strip set. Exactly. I have four strips the same size that I've pieced together, pressed all one way. I folded it here to save time in cutting, and I use a 45 degree triangle to cut my triangles. I line up the top of the triangle at the top of the strip and the bottom of the triangle at the bottom of the strip and I can cut two at one time. We'll need a total of four for our block. So let's put I think a block. maybe eight. Uh, <laughs> yes, eight. I was counting <laughs> pairs. <laughs> That's fine. That's why it's teamwork here. So we'll show you how these would be seamed together. Here's half, there's four, and here's the remainder of this. So you would sew one half, four together, and then create another half and put the last seam would be sewn right in this manner. And then you go back and add the corners to make it a square block. The corners are the triangles, you see that the bias length is the same length as the top of the square in the book that accompanies today's program. Darlene gives you those dimensions. But here's one that's all pieced together without the hole in the middle because <laughs> when you put the seam allowance, that hole disappears. That whole hole disappears. And because of using lights and darks and different fabrics, you can really see the web. Exactly. The web design. Now, people may have scraps of fabric. You may have scraps of fabric at home. I do. Lots of them. And you, if you had coordinates in colors, you can make different. And they can be different sizes of sure. strips. Your total should all equal the same, or you can trim them down to the same width. Width, mm hmm And then you'd cut your triangles, and then you can get some really interesting results, especially if you combine different strip sure. sets. We'll see what we have here. 
see how this looks. This this spider web ran in, spider ran into a little issue. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to play around with it. This one and that one. There okay. we go. Kind of interesting. Get some really interesting didn't, effects. Didn't spin the right color combination, but that's okay. <laughs> I think you get the idea. But if you don't like stripes, if you don't have scraps, here are two more options. More contemporary options that may not look like the same block, but it is. But it is, and it's simply just two colors. So any two colors that you choose will give you a really striking, dramatic, graphic look. So you didn't sew strips together, just cut the 45 degree angles, yes. sewn them together, and then another option is, again, change the color. And do it scrappy, and you have a completely different look again. Two colors on the inside, but then Corner triangles are another color which gives this a circular motion. Variations on the spider web. The double wedding ring pattern is probably the most recognized quilt pattern. As you might guess, it is also the quilt most requested by brides. Are you hesitant to make one? Don't be. This three ring table runner is a good size for you to try out the pattern. You'll be pleasantly surprised at how easily it goes together. Three rings, easy to try, and here we have the sample, the table runner that you just saw. Has lots of components, Darlene. Yes, it does. There's actually five different shapes you need to cut. One is the center square, which you can see isn't a square at <laughs> no, all. No. <laughs> Another section is the melon. That's what I call this yellow piece. Then you have your arcs and also the squares for the intersections. And within the arc, there are two different shapes, very subtle, but the end pieces are different than what's in the middle. We're showing you 1930s fabrics for the most part because we're working with traditional quilt patterns mm -hmm. from that era, but you don't have to use that coloration. No, you can do something completely different, such as what you have here in all solids or use the prints of your choice. Mm -hmm. This is very dramatic. I think it's fun. Contemporary <laughs> homes look very smashing in. But this is, a, after all, a 30s design, and here is a vintage quilt. Looks much the same. Exactly. Nothing really has changed. It's a pattern that was developed in the 1930s and very popular because they could use up all their sewing scraps to make the arcs. And you can see that the coloration in the background, what you can use in this wonky square, and the melons can be different, and you get a different mm -hmm. look. Exactly. Now, you'll find that there are many templates, many books, many patterns, and putting this together, we're going to show you one option that we like to work with. We're calling this a fresh from the clothesline, so this has some different changes. These are the traditional pieces with inner curves for that center wonky square. But there's another option. You could cut them with this template set, which gives you outside curves, which are much easier to rotary cut. Our grand grandmothers did not cut with rotary cutters. <laughs> well, they didn't. No, uh -uh. They did it the hard way. Um, so I'd like to show you just how this works. We're going to start by cutting that wonky square first, which looks something like that. And we do start with a square. Mm -hmm. This one measures 10 and a fourth, which is what it says on the tool itself. And we align the edge of the block or square on the edge of, uh, on the line of the tool. And this is a line top and bottom. And now I can rotary cut that. And I would do the same on all four sides. And of course I could, um, cut several layers at once. Measure twice, cut once. Exactly, but you can see how quickly mm -hmm. you could have your center squares cut. Now we also cut the melons, sometimes from the same fabric, sometimes from another fabric. And I take a seven and a fourth inch strip, which it tells me on the tool, fold over the strip just a little bit, align the fold of the fabric on the line on the tool and cut and you have your melon shape. And there it is. So lots of cutting for this particular design. Now 
quickly two more cuts. Three more. We three need three more. more. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need the squares for the intersections. Sure. And I've chosen the pink and the green. And very easily, once the strips are cut the right size, you can just slide this marked square along sure. to cut the squares for the intersections. And finally, we're going to be sewing together arches let's use, like you see here. And there's a template to cut the A's. The and the B's. And the B's, the inner and the outer. And you have those in your hands. So let's mm -hmm. just lay those out. And now we'll show you at the sewing machine how these all go together. Sewing together the double wedding ring quilt reminds me of the very lame joke of how do you eat an elephant uh, one bite at a time. There are many little pieces here that need to be go together and it's easy to do is if you take it step by step. And Darlene is going to show you how to sew the curves and I'm going to detail the arc of all the pieced areas. You're going to take one section at a time. There were some small templates used to cut out the pieces, the scrappy pieces for the arc. There are six sections in the middle that were made with small little, they're not rectangular, rectangles, but they're pretty symmetrical, and then asymmetrical pieces at each end. Lay them out the way you'd like them to look, and they're going to be sewn together into this configuration. But what you can do is just meet them into pairs, and then do some chain stitching sewing those four elements together for each arc. When you press them open, then you sew the four together and you get this piece. A couple bites of that proverbial elephant and then you can make another arc adding squares at the end. Perfect squares and you can kind of see from that example how you will get the shaping that goes around the melon piece. That's all straight stitching. But Darlene, what you're going to share with us is working with the curves to create the arc. Exactly. So you take what Nancy has sewn together. The center is right there. I folded the melon to find the center. And we're going to pin it right at the center. We will also meet the ends and then ease that area in between and pin that as well. So I have an example pinned here at the sewing machine. We're going to be sewing an exact quarter inch seam. Now it's really important to say that you always put the longer area, which seems to be, needs to be easing toward? Toward the bottom. The feed dogs, right, mm -hmm. that will help bite it. That will help just mm. to ease it in nicely. And we feed it in slowly, taking out the pins as we go, keeping the raw edges together. And it just eases in very nicely as we're stitching along. So sewing curves is not much harder. It, you stitch a little slower, and you need to keep your raw edges together. But once you've pinned it in place, it goes together very nicely. So quarter mark the middle of that melon shape. You'll find the center of the arc because of the seam of all the piecing together. And then you can add the, the next piece. And there's your finished piece. The next section would be this with the squares added on. And you'd sew that the same way with, with matching the centers and the ends. Here's the example of two of the arcs sewn to that melon shape in the middle. You'll need four of these for each wedding ring design. That's right, and you can put them on in any order, doesn't matter, but we do it in the same manner as before. We mark the centers, pin them, pin the ends, ease everything in between and pin it as well, and then sew slowly as you sew the curve. So mark the center, match the ends and fit the easing and you see this longer curve will always go to the feed dog area of the des of the machine and you'll have a much easier time shaping this into place darlene pleasure to have you with us thank you and i hope you'll try some of these fresh from the clothesline quilts <music>
During my last Nancy's Corner segment, you learned about the Wisconsin-Nicaragua Partners of the Americas Incorporated and how women in the state of Wisconsin teach sewing to women in Nicaragua. My guest has been to this Central American country 35 times and saw firsthand the embroidery and design skills of these women. She returns to be with us on Sewing with Nancy to sh share how she found a niche market to sell the Nicaraguan women's creations in order to supplement their income. Linda Pratt is with us again today. Welcome back, Linda. Thank you. And you've been involved with this project for 13 years and been there many times. And then you got an idea of how that the women could benefit by making doll clothes. That's right. And this is a native traditional Nicaraguan dress. And we have a picture. You took a picture of a little girl in the dress. Mm -hmm. And here it is made in miniature scale. And this was the inspiration. Tell us about that, how this was inspired. <laughs> um, the Christmas before I went the first time, my granddaughter had uh, an 18 inch doll. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what will this be like when we're going to uh, see these centers? And I was thinking that it was about like 40 years ago mm -hmm. when, um, when children would come with their mothers to the meetings. Sure. And so uh, I took along a pattern for an 18 inch doll dress and well, I found out that they were making doll dresses for their dolls too. So we started out with that as a project. And as a project and they have used their skills of embroidery, free motion embroidery to do this. And mm -hmm. we, have a, right. we have a picture of uh, of our of Leah, I believe it is. No, oh, this one. Excuse this me. This one is Sandra. Sandra, pardon me. Sandra is holding the picture of this finished gown in or dress costume, and here it is, and on the 18 inch doll, and all this work was done on a treadle machine. That's right. And tell us how they they work on this. They put a hoop on the material, and then take the presser foot off the machine, mm -hmm. and they like to use a treadle sewing machine because they can control it better. And they um, very carefully mark with pencil where they want to sew. And um, just go ahead and oh. every, every stitch that's on this has been moved back and forth. Manually, not with a computerized right. machine. And many, you have truckloads and semi-loads of supplies and equipment that go down to there. Yes. Tell us about that center. Okay, um, there's a, a place in Stevens Point, which is our warehouse, mm -hmm. and we send things down to the warehouse in Nicaragua and Managua. And um, two weeks ago, we sent three semi-loads of stuff. Oh, it's amazing. So, so sewing supplies and uh, there are other learning centers there that they have that they mm -hmm. can they can look they can learn not only just sewing, but this is impressive sewing skills because look at this cut work. This is amazing and many women make these and then y you found a way to market mm -hmm. these dog clothes in this country so that they can then supplement their income and tell us That's a success right. story about one of your gals. Okay. Um. Leah, uh -huh. who makes the blue dress. Okay, we'll find the blue dress. Here we go. There we go. The bottom of the pile. Made enough money on her design to build an addition of a kitchen onto her house. What an important fact that she learned how to do sewing from the Partners of America. Wow, it's an, that's, that's amazing. Right. That's right. So she makes, the, she is kind of a signature style. Yes. And let's look at some of these other signature styles because they, here's a little smock dress. Oh, very sweet. And then cut work seems to be a very popular mm -hmm. um, technique. All this work on the bottom of the skirt, all done, done free motion. So the Partners of America, each state has a partnership. Wisconsin happens to be partnered with Nicaragua, and you have been involved in teaching sewing. Mm -hmm. How many sewing centers again are there? The 100. Or learning centers, mm -hmm. and where they teach sewing as well as other, other skills and arts, and it's just an inspiring story. 
Well, our viewers could find out more about the work that you've done and how they can be involved, perhaps in getting some dresses or partnering. Partnering, you can go to. All Things Sewing with Nancy are found at nancyzeman.com. And when you click on Nancy's Corner, you'll be able to look under the 2500 series and find information about Linda and about the Partners of America. Also, you can rewatch this program anytime. We have streaming video of the most current 52 shows of Sewing with Nancy. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Bye for now. Darlene Zimmerman has written a fully illustrated book entitled Fresh from the Clothesline Quilts that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $16.49 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2519. Order item number W0937, Fresh from the Clothesline Quilts, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.